God, merciful Father, almighty King of glory, in the adorable name of our Lord Jesus, we have come once again before you. The reason why we gathered here this afternoon is to hear your word. Let the entrance of this word into our hearts, let it lighten the dark areas of our hearts and change us and transform us for the better. Lord, let this word fulfill the purpose for which we have sent it may it never return void unto you above all make us all to be doers of the word not mere hearers or preachers father we pray that we shall not go home empty-handed let your word fulfill the purpose for which you have gathered us here thank you blessed father be thou exalted for in jesus name we pray Amen. we are grateful to god for our gathering here this evening we thank God so much for whom he is and what he has done for us. We welcome you all to yet another opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, the lifter of men. And that is why this evening, God wants to talk to us on the message positioned for divine lifting. Truly, this program was mounted so we can all be positioned for divine lifting. To be lifted means moving from one position to another higher position. This lifting is not just taking a step forward, but taking many steps beyond human comprehension. When we say God is lifting one, it means we are going higher from wherever we may have been. And so divine lifting is God's promotion. When God promotes you, no man can ever demote you. No man can bring you down. No matter how strong or connected such a person may be. So the Lord is set to lift you up. And every one of us in every critical areas of our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of divine lifting is such that no enemy can prevail against you. All foes will fall before you. Just remain faithful. Just remain focused on God, the lifter of men. So that your coming here will not be in vain. 
we want everyone to be positioned for divine lifting that lifting which god alone can do what god can do for us no man no woman can do it god truly is the lifter of men and that is why we have gathered every man and every woman you know as we aspire to go higher in whatever we do we aspire to go to become higher in every area of our lives and you can see that this summarizes all our struggle on earth everyone wants to go higher everyone wants to improve in various areas of life we all want to improve we want to go higher truly god is the only one that can lift us up for us as christians we begin with the spiritual lifting that is where our lifting starts when you are lifted spiritually you have defeated even physically and as we have gathered it is god who has planned this program that we can be lifted financially we can be lifted materially we can be lifted physically we can be lifted health wise we all want lifting in various areas of our lives it can be in your marriage it can be in your career it can also be in your business we want lifting but for us as god's children every lifting begins with the spiritual god will position you for divine lifting god will lift you in this program in the name of jesus Amen. divine positioning is the best position god where god wants you to be so that you can be divinely lifted he will lift you and that is why we should surrender ourselves to the holy spirit let the holy spirit have his right of way that are coming here will not be as usual let it not be like every other program we have come so that we will be lifted and let us all get ready for it but you can find that due to lack of spiritual foresight and invariably divine guidance many people are unable to attain this height that god has made to be their portion and that is why you find many beating about the bush divine lifting comes only from god you need to work hard according to his will it is not just to fold your hands and expect god to lift you you need to work hard you need to exercise faith in whatever you do you need to believe in god and you need to work hard so that god will lift you divine lifting truly is a process it doesn't just happen there are conditions for divine lifting it is not for one to go and fold his hand and say yes god is going to lift me no we have to work hard for it and we want to check some of the qualities one must possess before he can enjoy divine lifting some of the qualities to make you a candidate for a divine lifting the first is repentance beloved we are talking about repentance it is important that one repents that is to repent and turn back to god so that your sins will be forgiven your sins are wiped away that is the point from where you be, you start you need to be reconciled with god before you can talk about lifting that is why the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness then every other thing will be added unto you we need this repentance we need to turn away from our old lives to a new life we need to turn away from the life of sin and unrighteousness to the life of holiness and righteousness there is need for repentance you have to come to god you have to make peace with him god does not work at cross purpose with his word you have to repent and come to terms with him you have to repent then you will be lifted if you don't do that then you are wasting time when you sit back and wait to be lifted when you have not made peace with god it will be in vain there is need for repentance there is need for repentance only those who turn from their sins, only those who trust in Christ, 
and live lives that are characterized by God's word, those are the ones that will be lifted. Life of righteousness, they are the ones who will be saved. You have to be saved before you talk about divine lift, uh, lifting. You have to repent. You have to be saved. Salvation is more important. When God has saved you, when your life has been redeemed from destruction, then you can enjoy divine lifting. There is no other way to do it. Beloved, when God lifts you, no enemy will be able to change it. Brethren, we need life of obedience. Okay, let us read Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts of Apostles chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. God is ready to transform you. God is ready to usher you into this time of refreshing. But you need to be at peace with him. Your heart needs to be in tune with God. You need to repent from your sin and come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, this is important. Secondly, you need obedience. Brethren, God needs you to obey his words. There is need to obey. Truly, the fastest way of securing God's favor is true obedience. Do you obey God's word? Or you still live the way you like? Job chapter 36 and verse 11 says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. There is need for obedience. Absolute obedience to the word of God. Not obeying when things are bad. Not coming to him when you are in pain. Not coming to him because there is a dead need. As soon as God solves that need, you abandon him. There is need for continued obedience to God and his word. That is where you need to start. Before you can receive divine upliftment, you need to obey God's word. God wants you to obey. When you obey God, even if it does not seem convenient or reasonable, you are positioning yourself for divine lifting. Sometimes you wonder, how can I do this? Just like what happened to Abraham. One would wonder, Abraham that had been seeking for a child, and he got the child, and God said, go and use him as a sacrifice. You will be wondering, is it God that is speaking to me? You will be wondering, what is he really talking about? You, it is not easy for people to obey God. We should obey God whether we understand it or not. Obey what God has asked you to do. When you obey him, you are positioning yourself for divine upliftment. Sometimes it does not make sense. Your people will say, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Brethren, there is need for us to obey God. You need to surrender to him. Whatever he says, you do. One of our hymns says, whatever he says, we will do. Wherever he sends, we will go. There is need for obedience. Abraham obeyed God. He left his kindred and he went to a place he had never been to before. Some would ask, God, where you are sending me to? I know how much I am making today. If I go to that place, am I going to make more or the same? But Abraham simply obeyed God and it was counted, counted to him for righteousness. It is good that you obey God. Whatever God says, when we know that God loves us, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. All the plans I make for you is to give you a future. All the plans I make for you is for your own good, your expected end. That is what I want to do. When we know that God loves us, to the extent that he gave us his only begotten son, the best of his gifts, the Bible says, what can he not freely give to us? if he can give us the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are we talking about today? God gives you something to do. You disobey because you are looking at the word according to your flesh. You are looking at it according to human wisdom, not according to what God has said. And that is why many are not divinely lifted. Brethren, it is a condition that you must obey God. 
Obedience is important to our God. That is the fastest way of positioning yourself for divine lifting. Another is humility. Before you can receive from God, there is need for humility. Humbling yourself. A humble person enjoys wisdom. He enjoys grace. And he enjoys favor from God. Is it everyone that obeys God? Is it everyone that are humble? Not many will humble themselves before God. Because they have read. They have obtained, attained high academic level. They may be PhD holders. They may be professors. And what are you talking about? There is no spirit of humility. No one can tell them what to do. I am a man of myself. I am a woman of myself. People are not humble. You see them boasting. You see them filled with pride. They are not humble. But God does not work with the pride. God works with the humble. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says, you need to humble yourself so you can walk with God. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It is only when you humble yourself that God can lift you. It is not when you puff up yourself like I gave you bread. That is not when God will bless you. He wants you to humble yourself. Whatever you have attained. That is why the word in James said, God is the one that gives every good and perfect gift comes from God. You came into this world empty-handed. You will surely go out from here empty-handed. So why will you not humble yourself before God? You came in with nothing. There is nothing you have. Only the thing you can call your own is sin. That is what you adapted yourself to. That every good and perfect gift comes from God. Whatever you have attained in life is because God gave you. The wisdom you have is from God. The power you have is from God. The knowledge you have is from God. The expertise you have, the skills, they are from God. You came with nothing and you will go home with nothing. Beloved, for you to position yourself for divine lifting, you need to humble yourself. Humility is important. Without this, no one will gain anything from God. Brethren, we need to humble ourselves. Humility not only lets you honor God, it lets you respect and honor your fellow men. There are those, they regard other people as nothing. Other persons mean nothing to them because of their status in the society, because of the wealth they have accumulated. They look at you, who are you? Who are you talking to? Even in the Christendom, there are those big, big pastors, big, big uh, uh, prophets, and so on and so forth. They don't believe there, there are other people. Brethren, God wants us to be humble. Humble yourself. Say, so when you humble yourself, he will exalt you in due time, in the fullness of time. In Psalm 147, verse 6. Psalm 147, verse 6. The Bible says, The Lord lifted up the meek. He casted the wicked down to the ground. God lifts the meek. Those who are humble, he lifts them. But those who are puffed up, he brings them down. Why will you remain puffed up? You cannot achieve anything with your pride. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he may exalt you in due time. This is important. Humble yourself so that you can walk with God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ exemplified this. He humbled himself even up to the point of death. He humbled himself. The Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the people who have come to kill him. He could have called 10,000 angels. But he knew this would derail God's plan of salvation. And he humbled himself unto death. Why will you not humble yourself? What do you have that you have not been given? What position do you, where you are today, you may not be there tomorrow. Somebody will occupy that position. Today you are the managing director. A time will come when you will no longer be in that job. Today you may be a minister. Tomorrow you may not be a minister. Today you, you, today you may be head of this or that. In time to come, other people will replace you. That is why we need to humble ourselves. Whatever position God has given to you, 
whether in the political affairs of government or in the church of God in, or in the company or industry where you work, you need to humble yourself. Brethren, there is need for humility. Those who call themselves children of God should humble themselves. It is no longer time for people to say, hey, hold me. Do you know who I am? Do you also want God to divinely lift you? You need to humble yourself. Whoever or whatever you are in life, humble yourself. Brethren, another is service. Given service. Service to God is highly important. So is service to others. There are people who are very serviceable. Anything you are doing, they are ready to serve. Wherever you want them to serve, you find them, they will not be found wanting. They are ready to serve. Oh, there is a work to be done. They are available. Many people are not available. There is one of us, one of our FATAC students, he has been serving here since the media started work three or four days ago he has been there even yesterday he was here working even today he came here in the morning and later on went for his exams tell me why he will not come up tops we are talking about service everything about service so people the work you have given to them they say this is a small work ordinary usher ordinary gate man but they have not exemplified themselves they have not proved themselves in the work committed to their hands there are people just commit something to their hand they will do it as with their last breath we are talking about service Saul was not born in the in, from a royal family but because of service his people they, his people picked him up to be a king they were the ones that dominated him Saul to be king because of service how do you handle things given into their into your hand even our lord and savior jesus christ in matthew 10 45 he said for the son of man did not come to be to be served but he came to serve he served and even watched the feet of his disciples we are talking about service many people today they will be found wanting in what they are given to do brethren let us give service so that we can endear ourselves to god and provoke him to bless us and to lift us up. The service we give, whatever is handed over to you, whatever is committed to your hand, how do you handle it? We need to ask ourselves to see how committed we have been in what is committed into our hands. Brethren, let us be people who will do such work in a way that is approved, in a way that it will be seen let us serve serving without expecting anything in return when it is time for service they serve without expecting return because it is god who blesses it is god who rewards we must have the contribution mentality wherever we go we must have that willingness to serve we must have the willingness to add something in what we are doing willingness to add value to the life of others through service to whatever has been committed into our hands let us give such service let us serve in first peter chapter 4 verse 10 the bible says this as every man hath received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god we must learn to serve we must learn to give service as you have been given as you have been blessed learn to serve another is faithfulness brethren faithfulness is important in our work with god how many people are faithful how many people can be trusted given a position of trust and they will not spoil it we are talking about faithfulness everyone wants to employ workers who are faithful workers who are honest but as are they honest themselves are they faithful themselves how faithful are you in the work committed into their hands there are people once money enters into their hands they become they become somebody else they'll change themselves you can no longer trust such a person 
all kinds of intrigues begins to come in. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 20, the Bible says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Those who are trustworthy, those who are faithful, they will abound with blessings. So it is not in living with fraud. It is not living with 419. It is not live in cheating others. You need to be faithful in every area of your life. Then you are positioning yourselves. Things will be committed into your hand in the community. Things will be committed into your hand in the church. Things will be committed into your hand in your place of work. And you handle it faithfully. Whenever it is required, you make it available. They say, this is a faithful brother. This is a faithful sister. When you do this, you are positioning yourself for divine lifting. And that is why this day we are considering the topic. Positioning yourself for divine lifting. You need to be faithful. You need to be... Uh, uh, you need to have a life of humility. You need to live a life of selfless service to God and to man. You need to live a life of obedience. They are all important. Faithfulness comes from a place of trust and loyalty. God rewards faithfulness with complete package of blessings. Abraham remained faithful unto God and that made God to bless him. That made God to lift him. He was faithful to God and God blessed him beyond measure. God lifted him. How are you living your, your own life of faithfulness? Are you such a person that people will trust? Uh, can things be committed into your hand? We are talking about faithfulness. They say commit it into your hand. Commit into his hand. There are people that will be sent on errand. Even in the church. Go and do this. In every duty. They want to make profit. In every duty. They are not ready to serve selflessly. There are things. They must be the one who will do it. They must be the one to do this. But they are not faithful. God wants us to be faithful. If we expect to be divinely lifted, God wants us to be faithful. When things are committed into your hand, you will be a faithful man. You will be a faithful woman. This is what God wants us to do. Positioning yourself for divine lifting. This is what God demands from you. This is what God wants from me. To be divinely lifted. God wants this from me. Brethren, we need to consider the life of people who were divinely lifted up. We need to consider their lives. Divine lifting has examples from the Bible. Let us take one. The life of Joseph. Somebody we know very well. The life of Joseph. Joseph in his own life, he told his brethren in Genesis chapter 37 from verse 6 to 11. Genesis 37 from 6 to 11. It says, And he said to them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding ships in the field, and lo, my sheep ar chief arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him, yet the more, for his dreams and for his words. They hated him. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? 
Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed him. Brethren, there may be something God has placed in your heart. God may have ordained you for something. No man will be able to stop it. His brethren hated him, and he dreamed the more. The world may hate you today. The world may want to stop you from divine upliftment, but nobody can take it away from you. What God has given to you, no one will be able to take it away from you. Amen. Verse 20. Come now, therefore. You know, a time came as normally he visits his brethren in the field to take food and water to them. And they conspired. We are going to deal with this boy, this dreamer. We will deal with him. And they said, today is the day. Verse 20. Come now, therefore, let us lay and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beings have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. That is the plan of man. The world may have conspired. We are going to deal with that man. We are going to deal with that lady. Let us see how he will rule over us. Let us see how they will promote him above all of us. We have been working in this company for many years. We have been in this organization. Let us see. When you have fulfilled the conditions for divine lifting, there is nothing anyone can do. Let them go to the shrine. Let them kill all the fowls. Let them throw all the eggs in the water. Let them bury, the bury whatever in the ground. Let them throw it into the sea. Let them hang it into the air. It will be of no consequence. Because God is with you. And our case is different. They planned. We will kill him. One of them said, the brother said, look, Reuben said, let's bring him out. It is better we sell him away. So that his blood will not be on our head. 27 and 28. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let us not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content then there passed by the Midianites merchant men and they drew and lifted up joseph out of the pit and sold joseph to the ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought joseph into egypt that is the plan of man last time a brother gave us a testimony how they planned to assassinate him and they invited him somewhere and he went and they were almost pointed the gun on his head the one wanted to shoot the gun but god sent one of them to say ah okay this person you want to shoot this person you want to destroy do you know he, he is your brother and he said what the gun was already on his head that is the God we serve. When God has positioned you for survival, there is nothing man can do. They may take you to anywhere. And they said, you mean this is my brother? Where are you from? And he told him, he said, please get up. Say, nobody comes in here and goes back alive. Nobody. Your flesh, your blood must drop here. And man said, come. Let me escort you out of here. Because my boys, they will kill you you can't come here and see what is happening and you still go out no let me escort you and he escort him to the road and say from here you can go it is god the lifter of men the one that draws out men from the mouth of the lion that is the god we serve and joseph was sold into slavery and there to potiphar's house and that was where he served genesis 39 1 to 4 and joseph was brought down to egypt and potiphar an officer of pharaoh captain of the guard and egyptian bought him of the hands of the ishmaelites which had brought him down hither and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house 
and all that he had put into his hand. Brethren, this is what happens. When the Spirit of God is in you, when you have positioned yourself for divine lifting, everybody wants you. Employers want you. Do you know that employers will come to Faith Tabernacle and say, look, we want somebody from your church to be head of our accounts. We want somebody from your church to be head of our stores and inventory. We want somebody from your church because the person is honest. Because the person cannot be compromised. Are you also one of such people? It happens. We have experienced it before. They will come. Please, we need some, another person from your church. And we'll give them. And when God gives you that opportunity, don't mess it up. Joseph lived up to expectation. A time came when God sees, when the devil sees that you have been positioned for divine lifting. Challenges will come. Trials will come. Temptation will come. Joseph also had that challenge. The wife of Potiphar cast his eyes upon Joseph. Verses 7 to 12. Genesis 39, 7 to 12. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house and he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Brethren, that is the rule. How can I? Trials will come. Temptation will come. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Are you going to hold up? Joseph said, how can I commit this sin against my God? Against the great God who has brought me to this level? How can I? When nobody knows, when nobody sees. Because he knows that any little thing will make him to derail, uh, derail him from the path of rectitude. Any little thing will keep him out of the track. The devil knows the virtues that are in you. That is why he is fighting you. The devil knows the virtues that God has placed in you. And he is fighting tooth and nail to take them away from you. So that you will not attain that level of divine upliftment. But many are not in the spirit. Some would have fallen. But Joseph said no. And that was why Joseph was able to fulfill his ministry. That was why Joseph was able to get all the blessings God has ordained for, for you. Do you know that the day you became a child of God? According to First uh, John chapter 1. He said as many as believed him. He turned them. He adopted them into God's family. Everything about them changed. The ordinances that were against us, Jesus took them to the cross and nailed them there. Today you are free. Today I am free. So that we can uh, uh, observe. Today we can enjoy divine lifting. That's why Jesus Christ took all the ordinances, all the decrees, all that the devil has done against us. Jesus took them to the cross and nailed them there surely they will not come down because they will remain there and that is why you are set free and whomsoever the son has set free he is free indeed today you are free in the name of jesus Amen. joseph fought it and joseph without trial was committed into prison if you read verses 20 and 21 you say and joseph's master took him and put him into prison but the word says god was with joseph when you have fulfilled the conditions for divine lifting, God will be with you wheresoever you go. God was with him. In the prison, he became a head. You will be identified. When you join such an organization, they will see the virtue in you. They will bring you out. Because the Bible says you cannot light a lamp and keep it under the table. You are a light of God. And it is time for you to shine arise and shine in the name of jesus Amen. because the life you live is the life that cannot be hidden joseph was taken up and the keeper of the prison handed over to him the same way potiphar handed over his house into his hand he also became a leader that is what god can do a common prisoner he was there in the prison 
Verses 22 and 23 say, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. He became the minister in the prison, directing what should be done. No, you go and clean here. No, you go and commit, collect this. No, there is no fuel in the generator. You go and buy fuel. Tomorrow you'll be the one to sweep here. He became a leader. He did not carry a prawn to show himself. He was not carrying his CV, but he had fulfilled the conditions for divine lifting. And wherever he went, God was with him. He was seen and he was brought out. And Joseph was in the prison. What happened? Verse chapter 41, 40 to 44. Genesis 41, 40 to 44. The Bible says, Joseph was in the prison, and from prison, something else happened. Joseph came out from prison. Thou shalt be, oh, now it is Pharaoh who is addressing Joseph. Thou shalt be over my household, and according unto thy word, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt, and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of line, fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without thee, Shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt? Brethren, we are talking about divine lifting. Conditions for divine lifting. Joseph fulfilled it. And God transformed him from prison to palace. He became a prime minister. God is ready to transform somebody. You may have been in dungeon. You may have been in deprivation. You may have been in lack. God wants to transform you from prison. From that bondage where you have been, God wants to move you from bondage into a place of glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have another example, Esther. You know the story of Esther. The refusal of Queen Vashti to appear at the feast as King Ahasuerus demanded, it brought another problem. King Ahasuerus had to sack Queen Vashti. And there was a contest. He said, go and choose another queen for me. Go among the maidens. And they went in search. A new replacement must be done. They sought. And the selection team went out. Oh, it is not an easy thing to get somebody who will become the next queen. It's a very Herculean task. Follow me to Esther chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 now when the town of esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in, into the king she required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed and esther obtained favor in the sight of all that looked upon her that is God. She obtained favor. Remember, she was a captive, not even an indigent. She was a slave. She was only seven, but she received favor. You will receive favor today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not here for nothing. Esther received favor. Protocols were set aside. Rules were jettisoned. They did not follow the real protocol. They would have started from many people you know, from the daughters of rich men. They would have started from the daughters of uh, the, the big people, big politicians. But no. Protocols were set aside. And the Bible says, she obtained favor of all members of the panel. Have you gone to an interview? And once you want in, they say, what is your name? You mention your name. They say, please come over and sit with us on this side. We have gone through your CV. We don't need to ask you any question. You don't need to answer. No, just get up. 
come and sit with us you will join the interview panel to interview others at least you know your own job is secured this is special favor when others are struggling you receive it on the platter of gold you receive it in abundance that is favor god will grant you favor in this program in the name of jesus yeah. brethren that's what, what happened to esther an orphan a slave she became queen in a foreign land even if you want to become queen of nigeria first lady they will start the selection from local government level then they will come to the state level when you pass from the state level they will tell you there we have six geopolitical zones maybe south south we do their own the south east we do their own northwest we do their own southwest we do their they will produce six and the six will now go for the national that she received favor a foreigner this is what god can do this is why we need to fulfill the conditions for divine lifting you need to fulfill the conditions once you fulfill the conditions there will be divine transformation see everything about you will change and this is why this program is mounted that before the end of this program as you are here today as you surrender your life to the lord jesus christ you will receive divine lifting in the name of jesus yeah. brethren we also have mordecai mordecai esther's uncle was just a mere get man a mere get man and then the second in command to King Ahasuerus said, look, you refuse to bow to me everywhere I'm passing as next in command to the king. Everyone will bow to me. Who are you? A common, a common prisoner, a, a, a prisoner of war. That is what you are. You know nobody. You are like a slave here. Your own work is just to open and close the gate. But he was committed to his work. Today, people will say, an ordinary gate man. Yes, he did something marvelous as an ordinary gate man. He did his work well. And he said, I will not do this. I will not bow down to you. And Mordecai planned, I'm going to show you who I am. We are the ones ruling in this city. I am going to deal with you. And he made his plan. Join me to Esther chapter 6 verse 11. Esther chapter 6 verse 11. Then took, you know, the fight continued and Esther went to the king. Uh, 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 Haman went to the king and said, look, there is something happening in this city. There is a memo I want you to sign. And the memo had been signed, executed as the next in command. You know, Haman went and spoke to esther see what is happening we are about to be finished they are about to deal with all of us they will exterminate all jews go and talk to the king and you know the story and she went and talked to the king with all the risk when it was not time for her to see the king she went with faith and she was determined when we want to receive from god we must be determined. And Esther said, even if I die, let me get this. Whatever will happen, when you are about to receive from God, there will be obstacles. There will be threats to life. She did not look at all this. She said, even if I die, let me die. Even if it is death. Whenever we are going to God, the devil knows. That is why when your healing is quite close, the devil will come with all manner of difficulties. Loved ones will say, why are you wasting your time? Let me tell you what to do. There is a Babalawa you can go to. Leave this God. This God may not save you. He said, no, I wait on my God. I will not do those things. Beloved, let us wait on God. When you are running to God, the devil knows that when you run to God and grip him, there is nothing he can do to you. Suggestions will come. Loved ones will tell you what to do. Your friends will come. This is not how to do this thing. There is a short way to come out of this trouble. There is another way to do this. Just make this small sacrifice. Okay, you are a church man. Don't worry. Give us money. Let us do it on your behalf. Don't follow us to do the sacrifice. We will do it on your behalf. And Jesus said, my friends, when sinners 
entice you. Do not consent. Don't give your consent. When you give your consent, you are already guilty. You are already guilty. Go to God. Wait on him. That in the fullness of time, you will receive from him. And he made all the plans. And Esther called the feast and said, look, invite Haman. Haman was so happy. There is no one in this land higher than I. Look at, there is a banquet. I'm the only one invited. And he posed and went in and enjoyed the first day. He went back and told his wife, it was a sumptuous meal. In the whole nation, I was the only one. When the second day, he went the third day, and the king said, what do you want me to do for you? Say it, let me do it. Even if you want me to divide this kingdom into two. He said, we have been sold for a pardon. As you see all of us, including me, we are going to be killed. All of us say, who is planning that? He says, not even me. All the Jews, they, a plan has been hatched to kill us all. Who is the person? This is the man before you. And we know what happened. Beloved, when we are treading the path of righteousness, when we are standing on the truth of the word of God, don't mind what they will plan against you. The Bible says they shall gather. Eh? They will gather. They will conspire. They will come. Plan and come to you. But for your sake, for the sake of the elect, they will do what? Scatter. They will go back home. They will go back home with shame. They will be confounded. All the people that were against you, all the circumstances that were against you, the Bible says they shall be confounded. Nothing will happen to you. Fear not. God is with you. Be not afraid. He is our God. He will be with us. He will lead us. And he's going to transform us. All those who were incensed against you, they shall be as nothing. As a thing of naught. They will not be able to fulfill their enterprise because our Jesus is Lord. And our case is different. They may have tried with other persons, but our case is different. When they come to us, they will bow because Jesus is Lord. He is Lord over every situation. He is Lord over every sickness. He is Lord over every dep deprivation. He is Lord over every bondage. He is Lord over every incantation. Whatever the devil has done against you, the God we serve is a mighty God. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve the mighty God. Not a small God. Not the God people will put in their finger. They say, take this ring. Tie it on your waist. Our own is a mighty God. He, they will be confounded. Because we are not serving a living God. It is not the small God you put in your pocket. Our God is in the heavens. He's using the entire earth as his word foots too. That is not the God that will be put in the pocket. Not the God that you can reduce into your finger. That is not the God we serve. We serve a living God. And this God came and we saw what happened to Mordecai. It's in uh, chapter 6 verse 11. What Haman planned against Mordecai and the Jews he was humiliated. The form of humiliation that has never been seen. God caused the king to lose sleep that night. And the king said, what has been done to the one who saved the life of the king? They said, nothing. We have searched through the chronicles. Nothing has been done to that man. People will lose, lose sleep for your promotion in the name of Jesus. They will lose sleep because the king lost sleep and said, bring the book of Chronicles and read to me. What has been done to this man? Who saved the life of the king? They said nothing. Uh -uh. Verse 11. Esther chapter 6, verse 11. Then took Haman 
the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And he took him round. He took him round. That night he went home and told his wife, his wife said, hey, you, you are fighting a Jew. You are fighting a child of God. You are gone. You won't survive this. The next day was the end of Haman. That is what happens. Brethren, those who are struggling to fight you, those who are struggling to remove you, the Bible says you will look for them, you will not find them. You will not see them. The brother who gave testimony said, in that organization, he was the fourth in rank, in the hierarchy. He was the fourth. But the head of the organization was afraid of him. The head of the organization could not contain what will happen to him. And the time came. The head, number one, was removed. Number two was removed. Number three was removed. And the brother was picked to head that place. That is the God we serve. Beloved, this evening, God wants us to fulfill the conditions for divine lifting so that wherever you go, whatever you do, your case will be different. Amen. And we see that he was saved. Now let us read Esther chapter 8 verse 2. Esther chapter 8 verse 2. The Bible says, And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Condition change. Levels will change in this meeting in the name of Jesus. Haman and his household. And all those who were in the conspiracy. The same gallow he made for Mordecai. And the Jews was the same gallow used in killing him. All those who have planned. Whatever they have planned. If they fail to repent, it will come upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible said so. Mordecai was an example. Haman died on the same gallows, and he planned for Mordecai and the Jews. That is what God will do for you. Those who are persecuting you, those who are persecuting you in the place of work, in the community where you live, in the place where you do your business, they say we will deal with you. Because he failed to follow us to join this cult. Because he is not one of us. He refused to do this sacrifice. He refused to worship that idol. You will look for them. You will not see them. Yeah. That is the God we serve. I told you a testimony. A sister in a former station went to the market. Got a shop. And another woman called her. Say, in this shop, in this our market... There is something we do. There is something we'll bury in front of your shop so that customers will come. And the sister said, I have a mighty God. They say, okay. The sister went to market for two months. She could not sell a dime. We committed matters into God's hand. Some days she will go say, when I sell, I will eat from what I will sell today. And when I will sell, I will use money there and transport myself back. She will go. And she will trek home. She won't be even be able to drink pure water. But our God tested her faith. Maybe your faith is being tested. What sort of faith? Is it a genuine faith? Your faith may be on trial. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? After some time, the woman came again. Ah, we see you be church person. Bring money, make we do and for you. Nobody will know. And she said, I have a mighty God. And she came back to market. She could not sell. But a day came. A day must come in your life. A day of transformation. Because God says in, in the psalm, he says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you that you may glorify me. A day is coming. God tried her faith. And a day came. Before, they will come to her shop. How much are you selling this? She said, I'm selling this one, 2000 They will go to her neighbor and buy 2002 
But when the devil turned, when the heaven opens, ah, how much are you selling? My own is 2.5. It's original. How much are you selling? 2,000. They will buy from her own. And if she doesn't finish selling, nobody will sell. That is the God we serve. But some could not wait. Some, when their faith is being tried, they will not be able to wait. She proved God. And the people were asking, you don't go do them for secret. She said, no. It is the God I serve. And that is the faith God wants us to have. When we fulfill the conditions for divine lifting, heaven is opened unto you. And everything about you will change. Amen. Beloved, everything about Haman changed. Haman died. And Mordecai lived and became a prime minister. Verse 15. Chapter 8 and verse 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Shishan rejoiced and was glad. The community will rejoice and will be glad because of your promotion in the name of Jesus. That is why we are here. We must know the God we serve. When we fulfill the conditions for divine lifting, you see situations will change. Protocols will be removed. There will no longer be set rules. Brethren, this is why we have come. From gate man to prime minister, God will transform somebody here in the name of Jesus. There are many other examples. You know, there was Hannah. Hannah was barren. But from barrenness, Hannah became mother of children. Anyone who is barren in this place, anyone who has one or two children, you know the Bible says that children will surround our table. Uh, tonight, I don't know how big or small your table is. If your table is for one, maybe you will just have one. If your table is for two, maybe it is for two. If your table is for three, for four, for five, for six, for eight, for ten children, God will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Because the moment we fulfill the conditions for divine lifting, you will receive as much as you want. And that is why you are here. Because the Bible says, there shall be no barren in the land. Nothing will twant the word of God. Nothing will ever change the word of God. Whatever people have done in secret, wherever they have taken your name to, wherever they have taken your picture to, wherever they have taken your plot to, by the authority of God and power in the blood of Jesus, we destroy them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hannah's position changed. And God is going to transform us. And that is why this meeting was scheduled. Beloved, God is going to do it. Amen. David was a shepherd. David was not at home. God sent Samuel. Go to the house of Jesse and choose me a king. He went. And saw the first son. He looked at him, huge, and said, This must be the man. And God said, No, I have not chosen him. He went through all the children of Jesse. And he said, Could it be that God lied? Maybe God made mistakes. Let me let me check again. However, is there anyone left? He said, mm, there's just one small one. He's in the bush taking care of the sheep. Ah, said so we will not make haste to sit down. We are going to wait. He did not come here to pose, to show, oh, I have administrative argument. He was not there to campaign and said, we will wait for him. He said, he is very small. He is there with the sheep. Please send for him. I will not sit down until he comes. The world will not sit down until you are here. He was not there. But they waited for him. They are going to wait for you. Amen. Unless we see him, we will not conclude this interview. Amen. A brother wrote a testimony at D line last year. How he secured a job. They turned him round over and over. And the day came. They said, This person, we have been reading his report. Why have you not employed him? Each time there is an opportunity in Port they will send somebody from Abuja 
one minister will send, one director will send. Get on that day. He wants it. Look at this one. We have been reading his report. He has remained in this level. Give him this job. And the one who has been shifting the job was moved away from that department. Amen. Somebody will be shifted to a state of position. That's how Isaiah came to be. Somebody had to move. Mosiah had to move so that Isaiah would come out and do his work. So you, somebody will be moved. You will be seen. The glory of God is over your life will manifest. This is the time for you to rise and shine. The light has come. Remember, you have to keep away from darkness. Because men love the darkness. Men love the pleasure of pleasures of the world. And that is why they do not receive. Beloved, he moved from becoming a shepherd to become a king. From sheep. He's not somebody, oh, we have taken time to groom him. No. From shepherd, he was lifted to become a king. The job you are doing does not matter. The time has come for you to be lifted because the Bible says we shall be heard and not stare. You are going to be identified, you are going to be placed on high because the word says so. It is going to happen. We have been seeing it and it will continue to happen in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, remember there was a condemned thief. He had been condemned to death. There was nothing to be, there was no time for appeal. You cannot get amnesty. You cannot get the prerogative of mercy. Oh, let us go to the governor. He will give, or to the chief judge, to give a sign prerogative of mercy. But a day came when there was no more hope. The God we served, the lifter of men, made this man to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Lord, remember me when you are in your paradise. Don't you know we are suffering because of what we have done? Oh, Jesus, remember me. Ask him to remember you today. Whatever you have done, ask him to remember you and change your circumstance. Ask him to remember you and change your position in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You will be with him in paradise. Amen. God fulfilled this and the thief was the first to enter with him. And that same God is here today. But there was a worse case. There was a worse case. Lazarus was dead. Maybe your business has collapsed. There is nothing else we are doing. Maybe the relationship for that marriage has collapsed. He is no more talking to me. Maybe the relationship in what you are going for, in the family, no, my wife behaves differently these days. Maybe the relationship is going down. My husband has abandoned us. Lazarus old was that. Not, not, not he was sick. He has died. Not that they are waiting to bury him. He had been buried. Not that same day. Not for one day. Not for two days. But for four days. The God we serve. The lifter of men lifted the dead Lazarus. The sister said, ah, by now, you will be stinking. Lord, don't do it. And he said, say that now, I am not unto you. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Amen. If you believe, with whatever you are believing God today, you will see the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lazarus, come forth. Your business will come forth. Amen. Your marriage will come forth. Amen. Your sister will come forth. Amen. Everything about you will come forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who have been terrorizing you, the devil and his agents, God will raise a standard against them. Amen. Because he has put you on a higher pedestal. Because you are using them as footstool. They are under our feet. God has pushed us up. Say, I have given you power over every kingdom of the devil to root out, to pull down and destroy over every power of the enemy, Satan. And he crowned it to say, nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing will hurt you in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of Satan must be pulled down. Their witches and wizards 
They must be pulled down Amen. because our Jesus is Lord. Yes. They were pulled down. Brethren, what is it that our God cannot do for his children? What is this that God cannot make available for his children? That is why this project has been mounted. Jesus, the lifter of men. He wants to lift you from the miry clay. He wants to lift you from poverty. He wants to lift you from lack. He wants to lift you from all that you have been suffering. It is your turn to be lifted from where and for what you have been in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that this God we serve is a great God? There's our hymn that says, He I was lost down in the Holiness, 
in Hosea chapter 12 and verse 6, the Bible says, Therefore, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually, not for a short time. Secondly, we need to be doers of the word. In James 1, 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word, not mere hearers deceiving yourselves. You need to be doers of the word, not mere hearers, not mere preachers, not mere teachers. Be a doer of the word. Job 22, verse 23, it says, We need to put away sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart according to the psalmist, the Lord will not hear me. You need to put sin away. Sin is the only thing that will make these parts to be read. Put sin away. God does not work at cross purpose with his way. Brethren, we have said before, you need to humble yourself. In Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 8, say, humble yourself under the mighty arm of God. You need to keep humility. These are things you need to do. You need to purify your hands. Your hands must be clean. If you have shed blood, if you have gone into iniquity, repent, confess, and forsake your sin. That is the only way you can receive mercy. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh shall obtain mercy. We want you to confess and obtain mercy. You need to live in peace with all men. According to Hebrews 12, verse 14, maybe to 16. Live in peace with all men. You need to endure. And the Bible says you need to pray without ceasing. Pray, always pray. Prayer has no overdose. Pray concerning yourself. Pray for other people. Brethren, we are talking about to position ourselves for divine liberty. These are the things we need to do. You need to be a soul winner. Because the Bible says, He that winneth soul is wise. All the people who have come here today, you are wise people. The Bible declares that you are wise because you have come to win souls and will continue to win souls for Christ. This is also important. Brethren, at all times, we need to praise God. In all circumstances, because the Bible says, in all things, praise God. Praise Him in all situations. Wherever you find yourself, beloved this evening, having done all this, you have positioned yourself for divine lifting, which will last your lifetime. Because God's blessings come without any difficulty added to you. God shall grant you the grace to meet all the conditions for divine lifting in Jesus' name. Amen. Always remember to give Him glory that whatever the needs may be, God will change position. They, truly, we need a time to reconcile with our God. We need a time to ask for the salvation of our souls. We need a time to pray for divine lifting in the business, in our lives, in the things we do, and, and the desires we have according to His will. We need to pray for divine lifting in the family and all the challenges. Those who have been waiting for suitors and things. We need to pray for divine lifting above and for the destruction of the kingdom of darkness. We need God to uh, restore uh, and even the government we have. We need to commit all these to God in prayer. And that is why we will continue to, at the end of this, we will also sing like the hymn writer that says, He lifted me.